McCain Vogel here for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Jim Studi, an independent research agronomist and farmer member of the Watershed Protection Committee of Racine County in Wisconsin, is helping to lead a long-term comparison of conventional tillage versus no-till and cover crops. After just one year, the study still has a long way to go, but initially, Studi is seeing a 26.3 bushel per acre yield advantage with conventional. And most importantly, Studi says what he thinks they can do next year to shift those results. We found the answer in the fall after harvest when we were characterizing our biomass yield. So in this trial, we're looking at all the carbon inputs, both above ground and also below ground. That means digging roots. So we dug roots, and what we have here is an image of roots on this side from the conventional and on this side is regenerative. Now there's a slight problem with this photograph. I moved the roots to get better lighting, but I didn't move the scale. So the scale would be up here. So where we're seeing this cutoff in the roots is somewhere between five and a half and six inches. Obviously we had compaction in a layer there that prevented the roots from penetrating to get moisture and also nutrients. And it's a combination of the two. And we can say that based on some of the diagnostic nitrogen testing that we did. So we did basal stalk testing, which is where after physiological maturity, so you've gotten all the yield you're ever gonna get, you take the bottom foot of the corn stalk, cut above, just above the, cr the crown, and then the foot beyond that, and you analyze it for nitrate nitrogen. You need to have nitrate nitrogen there because it's mobile in a plant, and until the plant shuts down, that nitrate is going up to the kernels to fill, help fill the kernels in metabolism. It's a well-calibrated test. When we look at our values, um, we see that in conventional, we were in a category that we would call sufficient. For the regenerative system, we were deficient. So that tells us we were starved for nutrients. And then when we do a post-mortem on post-harvest soil profile nitrate, so this is nitrate, the nitrogen that's left over from the previous season and it's a combination of what we applied for the crop as well as what the soil gave up in the form of ammonium this is what's left over and we see a, 20, a 40 pound difference between the two of them and there's 40 pounds more in the regenerative plot so what that tells us is the regen plots weren't as effective as taking up the nitrogen both inherent in the system as well as what we applied so that's why we have the yield difference so that's the bad news. Uh, our strategy for this year, we're in soybeans this year. As soon as we get the crop off, as soon as we get our sampling done, we are going to plant cereal rye as a cover crop. We're going to plant it heavier than what we planted last year. And hopefully with the earlier planting, we're going to get a lot more root action. Our intent next year is to plant grain so we can maximize the root growth to help break up that compacted layer. Stay tuned for more results as the study collects more data over the next growing season. For this week's Cover Crop Connection, I'm McCain Vogel.